Hi, my name is Jake Bossenkemper, Director of Agronomy and Research here at Liquor Grow, and we're lucky to have Kurt Martins with us here today. He's with BASF. Kurt, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Kurt Martins, BASF Tech Service Rep for BSF in Western Illinois and Eastern Iowa. And so what Kurt and I wanted to talk about a little bit today was the, the persistent dry conditions and what we might expect if that continues. Let's hope that doesn't continue. Right, right. But what, what, what might we expect if it does continue? Kurt, why don't you go ahead and start? Yeah, you know, right now where the crop's at, we've got herbicide applications wrapping up. We're starting to think about fungicide applications. You know, a lot of conversations I'm having with folks right now is, hey, let's make sure we get the weeds killed. Uh, we, want, we want them dead. That means using the correct rates. So we might need to use higher rates. We definitely want to use adjuvants. We want to have the right rates of adjuvants maybe on the higher end. I know it might be opposite thinking of what some folks want to do, but when, you know, when it's been hot and dry, the weeds harden off and they can be a little bit harder to control. So we want to make sure that we have the right adjuvants and the right rates to make sure that we kill those weeds. The, the natural reaction is to you know be conservative when you know yields might not be what you want. Right, but, right. But the weeds are going to use the moisture, and that's what we need right now. Exactly. So we, need to get them we, got, we have to eliminate that competition to give our yeah. crop a chance, that's for sure. So, Kurt, let's talk a little bit about CEC and, and historical fertility management and current fertility management for that, for that case. So, CEC is a measure of the soil's nutrient holding capacity, but it's also a measure of how much organic matter and how much silt is in your soil, okay? So we know that the more silt you have and the more organic matter you have, the higher your total water holding capacity is gonna be. And you know, we hope this doesn't happen, but if the drought conditions persist, you're gonna start to see those fields that have more silt and higher organic matter really hang in there and really look much better than a soil that have, would have a lot lower CEC, okay? Also, in addition to that, fertility management becomes super important in dry conditions, particularly when we think about potassium. So when the soils get dry, it's much harder to access that potassium, and you are gonna definitely see fields that have, you know, have had good fertility applied recently and have been managed well historically. So you're gonna see those things start to separate uh, as we go forward if we continue to stay dry. Yeah, I definitely see the exact same things that, that management over the years, especially with the fertility, especially on the good soils, I mean, those are the fields that are going to handle this, these drier conditions a lot better, and it's going to, it's going to help add to yield. Obviously, if it gets dry enough, things get to a certain point, but those fields are the ones that are going to hang on the, the most, and when we think about making additional input decisions, those are the fields that, that we're going to target because, again, they've got the best chances of producing those, those sure. bushels for us. Sure. So, Kurt, we talked a little bit about off-camera about the difference in corn and soybean. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? As far as handle, how handle a drought, yep. Right, so our, our corn's moving along here. Uh, we should be pollinating within the next, you know, in about a month or so is, is where we should be at. Obviously, our water consumption really starts going through the roof once we get into pollination, and, and that's not a situation we want to be in. Hopefully, we start getting those rains by then. Uh, so, but compare that to soybeans, their water usage really won't start taking off until they start. we start getting into pod fill, which we're still quite a ways yes. away from that. I mean, most of our beans are going to start flowering here sometime after June 20th and, and really get into to, to major pod fill by end of July, uh, even into early August there. And so when I think about like the last dry year that we had, which was 2012, we had really good soybean yields around here in that area. It might have been, uh, the rains might have came a little late for the corn, but the soybeans hung on. And again, we had we had phenomenal soybean yields in, and a lot of folks, you know, took their foot off the gas with the, with the soybeans because they, they, they thought, oh, they're done for with drought. Uh, but uh, again, if some folks would have made some management decisions, uh, like a fungicide, insecticide, things like that on, on the soybeans in 2012, I think they could have gotten even more bushels on, on top of some really good yields that we, we had that year. Yeah, Kurt, those are all great points, and I don't think it can be overstated just how resilient soybean can be. You know, they flower from R1 to, they continue to flower into to R5.5, and that's a long, that's a couple month period. Right, right. And during all that time, um, any rain, so, so obviously if it's dry at R1, R2, those flowers, you know, not many of those flowers are gonna turn into pods, right? But if we get wetter by R3, R4, R5, or anywhere in there, they're gonna be able to turn those pods into seeds. So yep. soybeans are just really resilient. And we, you know, we don't, we're not giving up on the corn yet. No, 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 no. The genetics that we have today are incredible at handling, yep. you know, periods of some drought stress and, and heat. 
much better than a decade ago and definitely yep. better than two yep. decades ago. So we, we have to give give our yep. corn breeders some, some credit there. So yep. we need to be prepared. Uh, it should start raining again here. Uh, we think there's a weather pattern that, that's going to change yep. here sometime yep. in the next month. And if that happens, you know, we could be right back to fighting tar spot Correct. and, you know, making sure yep. we're getting our fungicide applications on. We might need some extra nitrogen in some places. Again, again, those management decisions for, for nutrients and, and pest control are going to be important. Yep, absolutely. Okay, Kurt, so I think the message we're given here is let's not give up. You yep. know, we're, we're still early here. Like you talked about, there's a potential weather shift. And if you want to know more about the details of that potential weather shift, I encourage you to watch our Lead Academy video that's coming up. Um, and lastly, thank you for your time. Appreciate you coming down. And uh, Kurt, let's yeah. pray for rain. You bet. I appreciate you guys' business, all your customers' business. Be flexible out there and be prepared Yep. when time's right. Stay in the know with Liquid Grow.